Hello there, my name is Ismail, and welcome to another Blender Daily Tip. And uh, today we're going to be making this microphone, and not the entire thing, but just this mesh here, because it's the most difficult part uh, about this, about making, modeling this uh, microphone. And uh, if you want to watch the rest of the uh, the modeling, uh, say holding this, uh, I don't know how it's called, but uh, and these parts here, uh, you can just go watch my uh, on my second channel uh, this video. Here is the entire process uh, from start to finish, how I made the microphone. But uh, for this tutorial, we're just going to be looking at uh, how to make uh, this part here because it's the most difficult part and uh, we want to save on time. Yeah, so let's get in and uh, get started. So I'll just start by making this pattern here. And, uh, let me show you how that would look. So this is the kind of pattern we're going for. And uh, if we add uh, the array, uh, it should repeat like that. So let me show you how I did that. I'll just open up a new blend file here. And uh, we're going to start uh, with uh, adding a curve, a Bezier curve, and uh, make sure you, straight it, you straighten it up by hitting V and then changing the handle type to automatic. Uh, so that is a straight uh, line like that. Now you can go to the curve settings and uh, turn on uh, bevel depth. Kind of bevel depth, depth uh, so that we have something like that. I'm also going to bring uh, the reference image that I used here so that you can see what we're doing. Just drop it there. And so that's the pattern we are going for. Uh, let me increase its uh, depth a bit here. Uh, so let's start uh, by subdividing this so that we can create that uh, kind of hill. Uh, and then we're, we're going to use the array uh, to make this repeat. So I don't want this gap here. So what I can do is uh, change this uh, because this gap here is being created by this arc here uh, that we have in that incline. Uh, so if you straighten this up and uh, straighten this on the other side as well, so uh, it should reduce that gap. So if I select both of these and uh, change them to from automatic to aligned, I can scale them in the Z axis by zero to make them straight. And uh, that should give me a very continuous uh, curve like that. And uh, if you still see a gap, uh, you can turn on merge here so that it merges uh, any of the points uh, by this distance uh, threshold. Uh, so this is what we have. And now I can select everything, Shift D, duplicate this, to have this. Uh, I'm also going to increase uh, the uh, the depth, level depth a bit, something like this. I can see we are having this intersecting, intersection, so I don't want that, I want this. When this goes up, this should go down, it should be the opposite, so I'll select this, Control L, mirror this in the Z axis, so that we have something of this sort. So let's see what happens if we, we add another array. And this time around, it should be uh, for the Y axis something like that. I think we can scale this down a bit. But, uh, it seems we are lacking a loop uh, that goes, I think it would go around like this. So let's see, if I select this here, Shift D and uh, move it. Let's see, if I move it here. Let's see where should it be. I think it should be around there. Uh, but uh, mirror it in the Z axis, so that is the opposite of what we have here. Uh, it's creating this gap here uh, uh, because the array uses the last edge here to start uh, as the beginning point. So we'll handle that uh, gap later. Let's see if I can, yeah, I think I can just move this until it's connected with this, like that, and uh, select this, push that up a bit, and push this down a bit. So I think now we are lacking one 
extra uh, loop uh, that should go uh, that should mirror this here so just select this and this time put it on this side put it here okay mirror that in the z-axis something like that now we just need to move these polygons until they connect and uh, we have our pattern you can see that's quite easier. Actually, this is not how I did the pattern in uh, in this version when I was creating the first, the original model. I think I even struggled a bit uh, to make this pattern in that you'll see that, but uh, you always improve on your skills whenever you try something twice. And I think this is a, this is a, I, it has produced better results and uh, even I did it faster uh, than I did it previously. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm going to end this part here uh, just so so that I don't make this too long and uh, in the next part we'll be uh, creating this pattern, making uh, deforming this pattern into uh, the shape you see here. Thanks for watching.